We are Odoo Partner specialized in the utilities industry. For many years, we built completely new system landscapes, mainly with SAP. Since 2016, we have added Odoo to our portfolio. Now we use Odoo for our German clients in the utilities industry. In today's talk, I will explain what Odoo can and cannot do. At first, this will be really high level. Then I will also switch to a live demo. But first, let me introduce myself. I am Manuel Sauer, the CEO of SAMSA IT. We are Odoo Gold Partner and our clients are corporations, corporate startups, utilities companies, service providers and trade companies. We are experts in IT architecture and in particular, we integrate SAP systems with a very long experience. If you are interested in our references, please visit our website and also feel free to watch uh, our YouTube videos from a previous roadshow. Now let's start. The utilities industry divides products between commodity and non-commodity. Commodity products are electricity, gas, heat, and water. Non-commodity products are pretty much everything else. Photovoltaic panels, solar heating, battery storages, also services like maintenance and, and energy efficiency consulting even insurances, for example, for photovoltaic panels. The big difference is commodity products are related uh, to consumption, electricity consumption, gas consumption, heat consumption, water consumption. The more you consume, the more you pay. And your consumption can vary every month. It's a bit different with the non-commodity products. The non-commodity products are just products that you sell uh, and you charge for them. Um, doesn't matter if there are products where you charge them one time or if it's services uh, that you uh, charge by the hour or uh, if it's services that you charge with a fixed price. First, I will talk about what Odoo can and cannot do, um, but this will merely give you an idea on the functionality that is available. In the second part, we will go through a few Odoo features and add-ons as examples. We do this two times, uh, one time for the commodity and uh, the second time we will look at non-commodity. So let's have a look what Odoo can do with regards to commodity products. As a full-blown CRM and ERP system, it can do pretty much everything, except anything related to utility-specific processes. The reason is Odoo is a generic system. It's not specifically built for a particular industry like the utilities industry. For example, it does not know tariffs, it has no market communication, and it is missing all the utility specific details like an installment plan. The same goes by the way for the core processes as well as all the supporting processes. Consequently, Auto is not used in the utilities industry standalone. It is always connected with other systems that handle the utility specific details. For example, you can use Odo together with PowerCloud, which is a utility specific billing system. For example, PowerCloud knows the tariffs and does the billing, knows the market communication, and Odo does the partner ledger and the general ledger in accounting.
Now let's, let's have a look on what Odoo can do with regards to consumption-based billing. This will give you an idea of um, what it can do, but also what the limitations are of the billing in Odoo. As I said, uh, in utilities industry, a lot of the things are related to consumption energy consumption, gas consumption, and so on. As I said, the more you consume, the more uh, you pay. So let's say you are charging your car. I'm talking about an electric vehicle. This will create multiple charging transactions within a month, assuming that you will charge your car a couple of times. However, you do not want to get five bills a month with three euros each, for example, if you're charging your car five times. Instead, I guess you would prefer to have one bill a month. It will save you lots of paperwork. So what we do is we store the transactions in Odoo and have the subscription handle the monthly billing automatically. I'll show you how it works. We open the subscription app and I have prepared a subscription. In this subscription, uh, we have a template that will create the monthly invoices. So basically the two subscription lines will be the two invoice lines uh, in a monthly created invoice. The first one is the power consumption and we will be charging 30 cent per kilowatt hour. The second line is the basic fee and we will charge 10 euros as a fixed price per month. At the moment the quantity is zero because we have not done any charging transaction. So let's uh, create a charging transaction. Um, I will try, uh, create this for the meter one, two, three, four, five. Enter the date. And let's say we charge for six kilowatt hours. I save. I, I need to connect this subscription with the meter. need to run a cron job and refresh the subscription. You see the quantity has updated and uh, it will be uh, multiplied with the unit price and you see the subtotal is uh, 1 euro 80. Let's do this another time. Let's say we are creating a second um, charging transaction. This time for four kilowatt hours, I save. Refresh. And you see the quantity has updated to 10 um, kilowatt hours. Um, based on this subscription, Odo will automatically create uh, an invoice per month. This will reset the quantity to zero. And for the next month, uh, it will accumulate up with every charging transaction uh, until the next uh, billing date and so on and so forth. The benefit of this is the client has an almost real-time information about his consumption because um, a client can log in in the Odoo web portal and can see the subscription. And in the subscription, we see the power consumption. And as I have showed you, um, 
uh, this power consumption, it will be updated with every charging transaction that we record in the system. So this is an almost real-time information for the client on the power consumption and also on the amount that will be charged in the next invoice. So in this example, I showed to you how we can bill the real power consumption every month and uh, how we can bill a basic fee for every month. This is one approach on how to do it. The second approach on how to do it is to have a fixed advanced payment plan. In a fixed advanced payment plan, we delete the connection to the meter. This will um, uh, create an invoice with a fixed amount every month. So the amount for the power consumption we charge is three euros every month, it will be fixed. And also the basic fee, it will be 10 euros and it will be fixed. And we treat this as an advanced payment plan. So uh, for uh, 12 months, this will be charged to the client. But we have to also charge for the real energy consumption. So what we do is we duplicate this subscription, change it to yearly. And in the yearly <clears throat> subscription, we deduct all the advanced payments. So 12 times 10 means 120. And uh, 12 months we enter here. So this is the deduction of the advance payments. And instead, we charge now for the real power consumption. And we read this real power consumption from the meter. Same as we did it before, but this time we only read it once a year instead of every month. Basic fee and the basic fee we charge for 12. So that's it. So with this subscription, what we do is we charge by the real consumption that we accumulate over one year. We charge for 12 times the basic fee and we deduct all the money that the client has paid as advance payments over the 12 months. And all of this uh, will create a yearly invoice uh, that we then can send to the client. Okay. Now let's come to the non-commodity world. Again, I will show what Odoo can uh, and cannot do. And also show a, select, um, a selection of uh, standard features and SAMHSA add-ons. So I explained already that in the utilities company, there are commodity and non-commodity products and that uh, commodity products are only partially supported by Odoo. It's a complete different story with the non-commodity products. Here you can really use Odoo standalone. Yet it is common to use Odoo together with SAP or DATEV. The reason is that we do many speedboat projects. What is a speedboat project? For example, a corporation decides to do a strategic investment in the sale of certain energy related products. They want to do the project quickly and cost efficient. And for this reason, they cannot do redo. They cannot redo their complete corporate processes for all the different departments. So what we do is use Odoo as the speedboat, connect it with SAP or DATEV, the big mothership, and nobody has to change any of the existing business processes in the big mothership. So for example, we can uh, 
uh, do a speedboat project and do a CRM and uh, billing with Odoo, but uh, we continue to do the overall accounting and the fiscal declarations with uh, the system that you already have. So you benefit from the agility that Odoo has. Uh, also, you benefit from all the um, well-established processes in the corporation and we can combine the two. I always say Odoo is like modeling clay. SAP or Dativ are given and we tweak Odoo to fill up the gaps. By the way, this applies for all the core processes as well as all the supporting processes. All the high-level processes and features are available to run Odoo as a standalone system for CRM, ERP, and even as a web portal with e-commerce and customer self-service. Now let's have a look at a few interesting standard features. Utility companies are the main providers for energy-related products and services. However, they in turn facilitate the services of local craft companies. For example, um, the utilities uh, company uh, sells a photovoltaic panel to the client, but in turn, um, the utility company works together with a partner and the partner actually sends and installs the photovoltaic panel on the roof of the house. And for this, the Odoo dropshipping is a great tool to manage everything for the end customer and to employ suppliers with the actual work like installing a photovoltaic panel on the roof. Dropshipping means instead of the utilities company directly shipping uh, things to the end client, the utility company tells the supplier to ship directly to the client. So um, the supplier can uh, drop off the photovoltaic panel and can install it directly with the client. It does not have to go to your inventory. If you're interested in this feature, I encourage you to have a look at odo.com slash slides. There are great videos that explain dropshipping in more detail. Another auto standard feature is the fulfillment. You know, all the different internal and external players need to be coordinated. Like you need to coordinate your own staff, but also uh, local craftsmen and other partners. What many do not know is that Odo can automatically create a ready-made project setup, including the project, all tasks, and even subtasks. If you configure Odo correctly, when you confirm a sale order, it can automatically create a project. And in this project, it can create multiple tasks. Imagine you're shipping products like a photovoltaic panel and uh, you're also selling the maintenance for it, um, also selling services like the assembly, then it might be useful for you uh, to have uh, all the tasks that need to be done in a project. And this way you will never forget to fulfill what you told the customer to do for him or her. For example, here you see the reminder that you need to register the photovoltaic panel with the DSO, uh, which is maybe one uh, service that you provide to the client. Another SAMHSA IT add-on allows the end customer to save tax. In Germany, private customers get money back from the tax office if household services are separated from hardware goods correctly. So we can enter the labor cost on the product and uh, we copy the labor cost to um, the quotation and from the quotation to the invoice. And then it's all a matter of printing this on the invoice. And with this invoice, 
the end client can save text. The last SAMSA add-on for today is the Watfox integration. Watfox is an internet portal for energy-related products. Clients can inform themselves about renewable energy and they can uh, enter their data and Watfox will give them lots of information, tips and tricks. Um, clients enter their data and Watfox uh, will send the leads to you. <laughs> With our Watfox integration, Watfox can send the leads to you directly into your sales pipeline in Odoo. So in other words, Watfox can create a leads in your sales pipeline in Odoo directly. And from there on, you can process them, uh, qualify them, write offers and so on and so forth. If you have any questions, uh, please uh, feel free to ask your questions in the Q&A session. Also, please uh, visit us uh, at our virtual stand at the Odo Experience. Also, you can contact us on our contact form on our website. Also, you can uh, contact me directly by email. Hopefully, see you soon. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye. Hello, hello. Yeah, thank you for uh, for that great presentation. That was fantastic. I love to see Odoo being used in a new industry uh, and especially a specialized one where there's so much room for growth. Um, I'm going to go ahead and ask some of the questions that people were asking in the chat, handle a little bit of Q&A. Anybody is welcome to add a question into the chat for this talk right now. Um, but yeah, Manuel, uh, so basically I wanted to, to know, you mentioned uh, some people will use SAP and Odoo maybe simultaneously. Uh, have you managed integrations between the two? Got it. Okay. It sounds like we might be having a sound issue where we're not being able to hear uh, Manuel right now. I can hear you just fine. Uh, in the meantime, while we're fixing that audio issue, I could safely say that Manuel's answer was yes. <laughs> they have managed integrations with SAP quite frequently, quite often. Um, okay. Uh, testing audio. Manuel, can you talk? Oh, just give it a minute. I can hear you. Yeah. I guess while we're testing, uh, maybe you could tell me about the art behind you with those nice flowers. Uh, is that something you picked out or is that just already there in the room? Ah, yeah, I have, I have the same situation at my house. My, my girlfriend that I live with is a designer and so she's got really nice photos up on the wall behind me and I, I get the compliments, but I, I didn't have anything to do with it. Um, um, yeah, for anybody that was wondering, uh, Manuel said that his wife is the interior designer there. And so you have that, you have her to thank for that lovely backdrop. Um, maybe in the meantime, I could just relay answers, uh, that you give me. Um, in addition to the utilities, it's great to have a focus, but does your company work with other, uh, industries as well?
his screen for a second visually. Okay. Um, I don't know if anybody could hear that, but basically, uh, yeah, services provided in other industries, quite a few. At this point, we're going to end the Q&A because we're going to jump to another talk, but extended Q&A, uh, you'll be able to jump into a room with Manuel directly, and I promise you will be able to hear him there. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put the link right here.